Hi, I'm Brian with the George Memorial Library, and today I will tell you everything you wanted to know about shutter speed and how this camera setting affects your photographs. This video is for people who want to learn how to shoot in manual mode in order to be in full control of how your images turn out. For this video, you will need a camera that can be used in manual mode, such as a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, and most point-and-shoot cameras. Unfortunately, most camera phones do not have a manual mode. The manual mode can be accessed either with the dials on top of the camera or through the camera's menu on the back. Read your camera's instruction manual to determine how your particular camera enters manual mode. So let's learn what shutter speed is and how it affects your images, and afterwards we'll do a little exercise to demonstrate the effects of shutter speed and let you experiment with how it works. And remember to check out all the other videos Fort Bend County Libraries has on its channel. We have a plethora of instructional vi videos on a wide range of subjects. So what is shutter speed? First, we need to know the basics of how a camera works. A camera focuses light onto film, or in the case of a digital camera, a digital sensor. This happens when you press the shutter release button, which opens the shutter for a duration of time and lets light in. The longer the time it is open, the more light that gets in, and the brighter your image will be. Conversely, the shorter the time it is open, the less light gets in, and your image will be darker. The aperture is the size of the hole the light travels through. The bigger the hole, the more light gets in, and the smaller the hole, less, lights, less, less light gets in. We'll talk more in depth about the aperture in the next month's video, but the important thing to know now is that the shutter speed and aperture settings work in tandem to achieve a proper exposure. The goal of the photographer is to choose a shutter speed and an aperture setting that will result in a photograph that is not too bright and not too dark, also taking into account the other effects that shutter speed and aperture have on the image. And for shutter speed, that other effect is how the camera handles motion. If there are moving objects in the picture, changes in the shutter speed will determine if that motion is frozen or if it is blurred. We'll do an exercise later in the video demonstrating this. The shutter speed settings are measured in fractions of a second. The typical settings are, starting with the slowest shutter speed, is 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 over 15, 1 over 30, 1 over 60, 1 over 125, 1 over 250, 1 over 500, and 1 over 1000. This may vary from camera to camera. Some cameras will have a faster shutter speed up to 1 over 8000 of a second and some may have a very slow shutter speed options for one second or longer. Many cameras also have a bulb option where the camera shutter opens when you press the shutter release button and closes only when you press it a second time. This is used for long exposure photography like the picture shown. I took this in the Rocky Mountains shortly after sunset so it was fairly dark. I kept the shutter open for about 10 seconds, which caused the moving water to blur nicely while keeping the rest of the image sharp. When using slow shutter speeds, you must always use a sturdy tripod, which brings us to the problem of camera shake. If you're using a slow shutter speed, the slightest movement of your hands holding the camera may cause the image to blur. It is therefore recommended to use a tripod if you are using a shutter speed slower than 1 over 60th of a second. And even with a tripod, the movement caused by pressing the shutter release button may, may be enough to cause a blurry image. You should therefore use a timer function on your camera if it has one. Now let's talk about how shutter speed handles movement. A fast shutter speed typically 1 over 250th of a second, or faster, will freeze motion. An example of this is this image I took of a rock band who jumped up in the air all at the same time. They are all in sharp focus and frozen in midair. But if the shutter speed is low, usually under 1 30th of a second, the motion becomes blurred, like the hair in this image of another musician I photographed. 
Frozen motion isn't always preferable over blurred motion and vice versa. It depends on the mood you wish to convey in the photograph. Frozen motion conveys a sense of immediacy or urgency, whereas blurred motion is softer and more ethereal. Freezing motion is great for sports photography, whereas boring motion may be preferable in photographing dancers. The most important part is that your motion should either be completely frozen or very noticeably blurred. Slightly blurred motion will just look like a poorly taken photograph. Now, let's do an exercise. All right, for this exercise, uh, we're going to demonstrate how to both freeze and to blur motion. So all you need for this is a camera on a tripod and someone who today will be Kiwi uh, or something to put in motion. So what I'm going to do is have Kiwi jump up in the air. And uh, so for the first one, we're going to try to freeze the motion. So I'm setting my, uh, uh, we're in bright sunlight, which is great for that. So I'm setting my shutter speed to about one over two thousand of a second uh, and setting my aperture as large as it's going to go for my camera it's f3.5 so let's give it a try all right there we go all right and as you can see uh the motion is completely frozen and she's crisp and sharp in focus so for the next one, we're going to try to blur motion. So for this one, we'll be moving into the shade. All right, for this one, we're going to try to blur the motion. And for that, uh, it's easier to do when it's darker. So we move into the shade so we can get a slower shutter speed. For this one, the shutter speed is going to be one tenth of a second. And I've moved my aperture to F22. So let's see how this one goes. All right, go ahead. And there you have it. And as you can see, uh, the motion is blurred, uh, but everything else in the photo, because it's on a tripod, is in clear, sharp focus. I hope you learned a lot about shutter speed. And next month, stay tuned, and we will do a video on everything you wanted to know about aperture. Have a great day.